Lord, if I pray with great intensity and fervor and fire, you will hear me. Is that true? None of those. I mean, God is not deaf. Diri bungul si God. But what we see here is that the reason why God answers your prayer is not so much the more that you're praying, but when you understand and know His purposes, then He uses you to accomplish it. And this is what I'm saying about understanding the time and the season. I want to show you a picture of the tabernacle really quick. This is the tabernacle of Moses. Uh, You see there in the front, uh, you know, the priest with the animals. That's uh, uh, the laver, the altar of bronze. Keep going, bro. This is inside, okay? The inside, the holy of holies and the holy place. If you notice, okay, what, what does that say right there? Right, right before the curtain, the ark, what's, what, what is that? Golden incense, what? Altar. Now think about it. You have to go through all these elaborate ceremonies and the ark of the covenant represented what? The ark of the covenant represented the presence of God. And The high priest was allowed to go behind the curtain only once a year. And he had to offer a sacrifice for himself and for the people. And he says that he had to tie a rope on his ankle. And then he had bells on his tassel because if there was sin that he didn't know about it or he committed, as soon as he entered God's presence, guess what? He would die. But notice what is in front of the curtain. It says, okay, you have the framework, you have the lampstand, you have the table of shoe bread, and then the golden altar of incense. And as I was praying, Lord, why is that there? And God showed me that the altar of incense represents prayer and intercession. Before you can go to the very presence of God, the process and the journey of entering in. Now imagine, grab it all. If you were a Jewish person and you live far away, imagine you, know, you had to sacrifice certain times of the year. You would travel so long and all you, could, all you would reach, you would just reach the bronze altar and then you would actually you would give your sacrifice to the priest and then you would leave. That's it. That was the extent of your worship to God. And then these elaborate, elaborate ceremonies and practices, only to once a year, the priest, the high priest was allowed to enter the holy place. And what you see here, and this is important for us, is that the golden altar of incense represents prayer and intercession. And what you see here, this is the bronze altar. I mean the altar of incense, right? It's got four horns. It's about 1.5 feet uh, squared and then about three feet high. And, you know, and what's important was the priests were commanded every morning and every afternoon during the times of burnt offering, the priests would light the incense. And the picture here is that the sweet-smelling aroma would rise up to the very presence of God. And in Isaiah 56, 7, it talks about how God is calling us to be a house of prayer for all nations. Now go back to the other illustration. The other one. Yan. See? The altar of incense is right before you go to the presence of God. And what that shows us, if you want to enter God's presence, that's the key. And what you do there is God wants you to accomplish His purposes. Not only in your life, but in the lives of others. Okay? And then in the next verse, the next verse it talks about 
You know, Psalms 141 verse 2, it says that, May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. And then it also talks about in Revelation 8. It says that the angel, another angel who had a golden ses, uh, uh, censer came and stood at the altar. And then he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of the saints. See, God wanted where his people dwelt to be, you know, to approach him to pray. Now, what am I saying? This is what I, this is what I'm sensing. I believe that we've waited so long. Some of you have been waiting for 10, 15, 20 years or more. And let me say, let me say this, the season has come. If you've been believing for breakthrough, if you've been believing for abundance, if you're believing for prosperity, if you're believing for, you know, impossible things for your family, the season is at hand. But it's not going to happen automatically. It's got to be birth through prayer and intercession. And that's why every year, you know, we make it a point talaga that, you know, we're not saying that we're good. We're not saying that we have the system down path. We're not saying that, you know, uh, we have the, the protocols. We have the resource. We have the, you know, we have uh, the connection. No, we're saying, God, we need you. We're not good. We're not gifted or talented in and of ourselves. But Lord, every, you know, we believe that as we do this, God will accomplish His purposes in our lives. And if you've never fasted seven days, try th three. If you've never fasted three, you can do it. <laughs> Fasting means you don't eat. There's a preparation time for it. And if you don't know how to prepare, you know what? Go to a computer and Google it. If you don't know how to use a computer, talk to someone. Basically, you prepare, you know, if you're going to fast for three days, you know, three days before you start fasting, you start eliminating meats. You know, I have been preparing for a month and a half now. I've been on a Daniel diet. I was telling Ruth, I haven't eaten meat in almost... Yeah, I... Well... For the first, for one month, I haven't eaten, no, for a month and a half, I haven't eaten beef or pork. But for almost a month, I haven't eaten chicken. And for the last couple of days, all I've eaten talaga was uh, even a little bit of fish only, a little bit. And I woke up this morning, I was so alert, I feel so different, I feel so strong. But what I want to challenge you is, set this time to be a year where you really go to God. Because the things that I'm telling you are not automatic. And, you know, yes, the baby is about to be, is, is being born, and the birthing is taking place, but there's one thing that you need to realize, that you have to start with the Spirit. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, listen, if you want to experience if you want to, to see the things that you're believing for, they're not just going to happen because you try hard. 